Hello, everybody. This is uh, Tony Colladio, General Manager of Salem Radio Miami, and saying hello to all our friends across the country on Salem Radio. And, of course, we have a very big election coming up on November 6th uh, between uh, Governor Mitt Romney and, of course, the incumbent president, Barack Obama. Uh, a lot of folks on both sides um, helping their uh, candidates, and we have the pleasure and the privilege of having a name I think everybody knows across the country and the world for that matter, who is uh, helping the Romney-Ryan ticket here in Florida, and I'm talking about none other than Charles Schwab. Chuck, how are you, and welcome to Salem Radio. Well, thank you, Tony. It's a real pleasure to be here with you on your program. I love being out here in uh, Florida, uh, where I am right now, and uh, going and talking to people about what an important turning point this is. It's a, virtually a tipping point in our economy. If we go off on four more years of what we've just come through, uh, we have some significant issues that we may never recover from. So I'm out here trying to explain to people the economic uh, possibilities uh, that the Romney Ryan ticket will be able to provide a different path and convince people to consider them, uh, to give them the, their vote, basically. And so, uh, I, I, with 12 grandkids of my own, this is an absolutely critical time for me to sort of promote what we could do with our economy if we were unleashed. It's interesting, uh, so that's Chuck. That's what I'm doing. It's interesting, Chuck, that, that you're actually looking toward, as, as wise men do, generations that are coming after you and and many have talked about that uh, the last four years have been a, a very challenging and and difficult time and if the next four years are much like the same generations will suffer so that you're talking about your 12 grandchildren kind of tells me where your priorities are that's for sure and uh, you know and i also have another <laughs> interest is so many of us in my age category i'm 75 you know are uh, in our retirement years, a lot of people are, a lot of our clients, of course, and what they are living with, it seems as though their nest eggs have been really attacked, meaning that the interest rates on their savings accounts, CDs, money market funds are near zero, and the only way, frankly, the only way that will ever get back is we have to return the country to normal growth, which would be 3 or 4% per annum. And I just don't see it in the Obama administration encouraging that, uh, with incentives or whatever they need to do to get that to happen, where I think Romney Ryan have a clear path to get us back to a very nice growth rate. And, of course, that will be benefit. Interest rates will rise under that circumstances, and our seniors will have some restoration, hopefully, of income to their savings accounts. Well, and, and government has never grown grown economies. Uh, we, we all know that. Everybody that's tried it across the country, and obviously in the last four years we've seen it here, it's really driven by small business and, and, and middle-class folks, and that's basically the tour you're on right now in Florida. Well, that is for sure. I started my business, you know, 38 years ago with four employees, plus myself, and we a lot of hard work, you know, second mortgages on my house, third mortgages, and so forth, a lot of sweat, blood, and tears. And, but we know that small business creates at least 75% of all new jobs. And that's why we need to get back and encourage and give incentives to small businesses to take on new employees. Uh, you know, there's about 6 million uh, businesses in the country, most of which are small. And if we could just get an incentive system that people would, these businesses would hire just one more person, Boy, just think of what we could do in one year. We could get four to six million new jobs by simple incentives. And that's what needs to happen. And that's what clearly Romney and Ryan really understand about incentives. And unfortunately, I don't think our present administration understands that very well. And, and obviously, Chuck, you run now a mammoth company. You, you have lived the American dream and, and fought for it. But there's a lot of folks now... Um, very tenuous 
and tentative in the sense of, of starting their own business or adding to business because of Obamacare, for example, not knowing how challenging this is going to be in many, in many cases. Can you talk about that? Well, it is a very serious issue uh, when it comes to small business. I was just uh, visiting a, a gentleman who has a sandwich shop, and he says Obamacare comes through, his sandwiches are about $4.50 a piece. But if Obamacare is full implementation, it's going to cost about $0.50 cents a sandwich additional. Well, you know where that's going to happen. It's going to go right into the cost and right into the price of the sandwich. It's going to really impact negatively his business. He's a small business guy. Uh, it, it goes throughout the whole economy. Obamacare, no one really knows, but the best estimates it will substantially increase the cost of small business. This is Tony Collodiot on Salem Radio, and we have uh, Charles Schwab, Chuck Schwab, the founder and chairman of Charles Schwab Company. He is touring uh, the state of Florida with uh, highlighting the Romney Pro Growth Plan on uh, Stronger Middle Class. It's a bus tour. Talk to us about the bus tour. I'm, I'm sure you've ran into a, a lot of eager Floridians that want to talk to you. Well, it's been fantastic, really, to see. I just love the fact that I see so many uh, small business people, including a lot of them are club clients. So that's been really rewarding to see and have an exchange of ideas with them and to see uh, some other things that are of interest to them, like, you know, the tax policy, of course, the right incentives, make sure they have the right uh, training, job training incentives, uh, simplification of the of the tax code and regulation. Oh my goodness! Just the over regulation, just incessant. But I hear total complaints. This can be turned around. I think with Romney in in office, he can through uh, various executive orders almost immediately reduce some of the burdensome regulations on small business. Let them get back to hiring people, expanding their businesses and serving their customers. That's really what we want to do. And, of course, large businesses, uh, we also want to see the corporate rates come down to some degree. We have this trillion three of money sitting overseas uh, that's just sitting there idly. Uh, if there is a simplification on taxes on that, modest tax, have it repatriated or bring it back to the United States to help create new projects, new innovations, and new jobs. It's interesting, Chuck, that you know we, we really shouldn't be surprised. The, the, the president, in the last four years, this is the first time he's ever ran anything. It, funny, funny enough, the, the first thing he ever basically runs is the world uh, in, yeah, the, in the sense right. of being president of the United States, and, and we've seen what happens. Boy, it's, it's interesting to have a, a, a talk about a businessman that well, has created millions, that has turned around things like the Olympics, actually a real CEO to be CEO of the United States. You know, one of the secrets, I think, Tony, that is a really major difference between the two people running for the presidency is Romney knows how to negotiate. He knows how to fix things. He knows how to bring two parties together of opposite views and get a compromised decision. He's not riddled like Obama just today, as a matter of fact, said, I'm not going to sign this thing and us as one thing happens. Well, when you get so frozen and not able to compromise, nothing happens. And so it's on and on again. He's been a perfect example today uh, when he issues edict that I'm not going to sign a bill unless you know millions of people that are in the who've been the successful people raise their tax. Well, I don't think they mind having their taxes raised, but it shouldn't be the only purpose, the only reason for a tax revision. Chuck, uh, there, there are no a lot. What you, no Go matter ahead. what you tax the rich people, it's not going to solve the solution, the problems we have with debt and deaths. Chuck, let me ask you a question. I mean, you're a very successful investor and businessman. Why is it so you can, so the audience can know? And, and what is the reason many uh, on Wall Street and, and big bankers and so forth are pro Obama when in reality? He's trying to chop their legs from under them. I, I, it, it's hard for me to understand those things. Well, I think it has to do with, um, you know, they're Democrats. Many of us are a particular uh, 
by birth, actually, almost, it seems as though, and we want to remain loyal to what our mothers and fathers did, and so forth. That's one thing. I think when you finally, if you're a business operator, small business, medium size, or whatever, you finally find out the issues that how, uh, how impactful government can be on you to restrain your business, and if you're just uh, an employee in a very large business, you don't really see the real elements of what creates jobs. You're just sort of a, a minion in some of these big companies. They don't think through what is the cause, what is the reason, what stimulates the creative jobs. They don't have that responsibility. Chuck, as to the recently concluded debate, the second one between the uh, the two candidates, what were your thoughts uh, a couple days ago? Well, I thought Obama certainly stepped up his game in terms of his energy level. He still doesn't have the content right, hmm. but his energy level was clearly there. And I thought, you know, it was sort of a fair exchange. I think uh, Romney did a fantastic job of expressing his agenda for new growth, the 4 million jobs that we need to create per year for the next four years. I think he did a great job about that, a great job expressing that. And I don't think Obama, even though he had high energy, he didn't really describe to me a vision for this country the next four years. And that was very disappointing to me. Chuck, I, I've heard your name for many, many years. I used to be an investment banker before uh, getting in the radio management and so forth and uh, and uh, on commercials talking about finances. I, I'll be honest, this is the, the, the first time that I've really seen you on the stump, so to speak, going out there. Right. And, and I'm, you might have done it before, too. I don't know. But it yeah. seems like your passion, you, you almost feel, it almost feels like this is the election, uh, you know, that, that's going to shape decades to come. At least that's what I feel from you. That's exactly why I'm doing it. I've never done this before to go out and speak on behalf of anyone, but I think it's so critical to see we just cannot have four more years of these bad policies. I'm sure Obama is a really nice person. I've never played golf in my life <laughs> doing that sometime, but I think if he would stick to his golf game and maybe uh, retire and let someone who knows how to fix issues, fix Olympics, fix states, as he did, that Romney did in Massachusetts, and let someone else fix the issues that are so desperately need, in need of being uh, uh, turned around. And so that's why I'm on the road. Well, Charles, uh, we, we want to thank you uh, for, for your time. I know it's very valuable. You're, you're out there on the stump, and, uh, and we're excited about it. Uh, thank you for being in Florida. Okay, Tom. And, uh, and we, uh, we appreciate you, and it's been uh, really a pleasure to have you here on Salem Radio. Thank you very much, and uh, give my best to all your listeners. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Bye -bye. Charles Schwab, the founder and chairman of Charles Schwab Companies on the Stump here in Florida, working for Romney and Ryan and trying to get a new president in office November 6th. This is Tony Kaladiud for Salem Radio.